All right, guys, we got one more game for you coming out of Group A. It's going to be High Five facing over against Yomi. This is going to be, I believe, uh, was it first and third seed? First and second seed? I forgot the number this, to work out. This is first and second seed, I believe, actually. No, the bracket no, shows something different, which is why I was like, Well, confused. it's technically, technically in the NA standings based off the Challenger Cup. It was first and fourth seed, but in this group, they were classed as first and second seed. They have both won their respectable first two games up against Lunatic Esports and KOS Gaming. And now they get to face off to see who is actually going to be the leader of this group going into the second week as these two face off. Yeah, well, we'll see who exactly comes out on top of this. We saw High Five have a little bit of a rough time against KOS Gaming last time, uh, that last one. So this uh, well, group A at least also, is anybody's game. They also had issues in the last game as well against Lunatic as well. So this hasn't been a clean thing for High Five this week. They're not looking on the ball as much as we've seen them in the past. And I guess, Yomi, this could be even closer between yeah. these two. Messy games from a high five this week, a bit unpredictable, a bit unlikely, un unusual from them, to be honest. Um, not sure what's up with them. Something just seems off the ball, but they're still winning the games, which is important. But they have to really win this one to secure themselves that top position. Yeah, it's early in the day. That's my my thinking behind it. Who wants to be up before noon? I mean, it's just, it's a little afternoon Who? now. So... Who? Who? Who wants to be up before noon? Nobody. No, not me. You have. Ever. You don't have to worry about it. Like, when you're over an EU and you're still not on an an NA time, probably, it's like, oh... It's not early, it's like evening. I'm having dinner and supper and tea and all this British stuff. You know, your tea, cup of tea and this, your tea. biscuits and scones and all so those fun things. Picks and bands are coming through and they're pretty much bands that we expected. Yeah. A lot of hunters still, a lot of uh, guardians being banned out. It's going to be Neath and Shibalanka for Yomi. High five taking Sylvanas below off the table. That left Athena open, who were, uh, she was quickly picked up by Yomi, followed very short ordered by Apollo as well as Sir Ket on the side of high five. Yep, so not a bad composition coming forward for them at the moment. What else are they looking to pick it up here? Ah, looking like it's going to be Al Kuang picked up yet again. We saw that earlier coming out from Yomi. Ao Kuang is a little bit of a risky play, can be shut down quite easily early on, but once he kind of starts getting going, the damage he puts out is, I don't want to say second bar none, but it's definitely up there as far as damage numbers are concerned. They're going to lock in Isis for the mid lane as well. A lot of strong early game pressure potentially coming out. There's some counter pick options as well, they'll be able to deal with her and kind of keep her in line a little bit more, but it's going to be Geb locked in for El Brochacho in that support role. Not a surprise to see Geb picked up. When, you, when Athena's been picked, it's kind of like, Geb, you may... Sometimes you can go over the Ares, but Geb's a solid pick. He's going to do exactly what he needs to. He wants to be a front line for his team, especially when they've got an Apollo and Sir Ket on the table already. They've got a decent damaging composition, and they're going to want those shields to get them out of trouble. Yep, it'll be good. Medusa's going to be counter banned out as is Poseidon. They take one of those kind of better counter options against that Isis. Poseidon as well, not just a counter particularly, is still a very good god in the game itself. A lot of burst damage. Cripples can never be underestimated. They ruin many a god's day. That's it, Poseidon taking off the table. Why not lock in the Monster of the Deep and pick up Scylla? Why not indeed? Let's see how this one's going to continue on during this as well. So, was this Scylla picked up? How did they, the composition seems very, very strong on paper in terms of late game potential. Uh, yeah, Scylla will definitely get scale up and be a, a big monster later on. Sir Ked is welcome. Going a little bit earlier on. A lot of pick, pick potential for high five. Yeoman out of the hand. A little bit squishier, and they're going to have to be very careful with their, their positioning in these fights. They did just lock in Ho Yi for their AD carry, and looking for Hun Bats in the jungle. They, um, or excuse me, for Soul Lane, possibly. Again, we saw that run back a game or two ago, where they ran they ran game one, uh, Sir Ket and Hun Bats, and they won with that as well. They did win with that, and so far, like, Yomi looking very strong from what I've seen of him so far. High five. They are top of the shot, but they've not been very clean. This is going to be a close one between the two. I love the fact they picked with the Ho Yi, though. The dive bomb changes made him a lot more viable, um, in my opinion, just for his mobility to be able to get away. Think of his dive bomb, his three, a little bit like an An Her Leap now, apart from the fact that you can move around a little bit more with it and actually yep. get a little bit more mobility out of it, too. Yep. Wheelish hover for the last pick and does get locked on in. So they're looking to make some good use of those knockups coming out of not only Apollo, Sir Ket, can uh, the throw from Sir Ket, that counts as a pull for a wheelish, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It does count as a pull for a wheelish. Yeah, so Geb will have the knockup as well with the Shockwave. They have a lot of set of potential from that. She's a pretty good jungler as well, at least when Feather Step works properly, which has since been fixed. So that, that was unfortunate for many people Tuesday. I, I was one of those people. Play a wheelish and suddenly, like, my wave, why can't I kill these camps? This isn't working. What is wrong? Oh, Feather Step isn't doing damage. That was... Very unfortunate. 
and well, dangerous picking the wheelish dangerous picking yeah, the wheelish but we'll yeah. see how it works out with them in that solo lane gonna be up against the hombats assassin versus assassin arena we'll be back after this short break guys as we get ourselves loaded in with the spectate all right guys hello and welcome back yomi facing up against high five in what will be the final game for today out of the group a for the round robin of north america i'm zayden joining me again will be hindu man Hello, we're already into this one. You can see Yomi with early wards down on both sides of the map. Defensive ones on the left-hand side, offensive ones on the right-hand side. Four wards placed early. They don't want to see any crazy shenanigans coming out from high five early on. Uh, one thing to note straight away is the hunter builds. This is one thing I'm really interested in. The patch changes to hunters and their builds may change based off it. What we're going to see, once again, Nevin going for a transcendent star, rushing that morning star. Meanwhile, across the way, Nonton going to go for the devourer's gauntlets and the death's toll, which we started to see come back a little bit more after the bluestone nerfs. This could be an interesting lane matchup because of exactly that. Apollo's going to have the extra life steal and sustain. He's going to have that Geb as well to offer some protections. Athena looks for a taunt, stone shield, and well, any poke they just throw out is pretty much going to be completely mitigated. So, uh, Nevin, on the other hand, you see it taking up a little damage from those camps. Any damage he takes is going to be more or less permanent. He'll have those health pots, but that's about it. Yeah, quick rotation coming out as well from the Alquan. See the mid laners, both back harpies were taken on both sides, so the jungler's gonna have to hang around mid lane a little bit more. This is something we've noticed in Season 2 developing now, that most people are starting to do these back harpies early on for that additional experience gain, so they're actually level 2 before they get to lane, at least for the duo lane, generally. Yeah. You lose at worst maybe one minion potentially. There's some uh, some concern potentially if the enemy team does not do back harpies as well. They could push the wave quickly, have level two, and look to meet you as you hit the lane. But I, I believe you're actually level two as well from the three camps. As, yeah, as I think the, the, the sort of game plan behind this is that you do back harpies and they don't. What you can do is hard push mid lane with the jungler and the mid laner, and then rotate to their back harpies and gain extra experience off of that as well. Yeah. So deny a little bit of experience to the enemy team early on. Yeah, Look at the spear ball mid lane unrelinquished. Gonna shoot left. Uh, Bulger unfortunately went right. For now though, not much really going on. Harpies in the mid lane is gonna be up in about a minute and 15 seconds. It's probably gonna be the re first real point of contention. Early positioning coming out of Met Yankee, looking for possible gank mid lane if anyone goes forward. But unfortunately, Met Yankee was Whoa. not aware of the fact he was sitting on a ward. Yep, that's the one thing you can't see, and we get the glory of seeing is all the wards on the map. So this rotation going to be a little bit wasted for Met Yankee. It does allow him to soak some experience in mid lane, though, and allow Nevin over here to soak up a full wave of experience on his own. Still another minute until Harpies respawn, and the back Harpies are available still to be taken, so this should be level fives for both the mid and the jungle. Oh. The right side, El Chipu finds himself the first blood. Yeah, 1v1, diving the tower and surviving. Level 5 all in. You gotta watch out for those things. Was yeah, Gilly was level 5 as well. Fear and Weevil actually not using that engagement. It's a rough call over there in the solo lane. We actually missed that on camera, unfortunately. But, you know, that, it is what it is sometimes. Level 5 hits. Assassins want to look to use that ultimate as quick as possible to find a kill. And it worked out for El Chapu. Yeah, it could be quite a crazy lane, that one, going forward now as well. I think what happened, El Chapu hit 5, used the ultimate immediately and just forced Gilly away and pulled him back in with a gravity surge when he tried to leap out. Picked himself up. 10 seconds on for mid harpies and already high five in position for the left ones. We should see Yomi going for the rights here. Yomi will contest the left, but they need to watch themselves here. Met Yankee might get caught. Goes on out El Chapu on the right-hand side. El <laughs> Met Yankee's going to use the preemptive strike just across. Like, yeah, I know you're there. I'm not even going to bother thinking about it. So one for one with Harpy Camps right now. It's all down to that first blood coming out for High Five to get themselves a little bit of an early game lead. Other than that, not really much going on so far. Aggression on the left-hand side from Nevin, though. Onto Nonton using the dive bomb to poke him down. Gets a nice stun off as well, so those archers doing a little bit of work. But health potion used for Nonton, he'll be fine. The early trade going in favor of Yomi's Hunter. <sighs> Yomi, though, Nevin still has both health potions in hand, as well as one of his mana pots. Shield wall drop down, taunt not quite pulling him to that one due to a time Mid lane, Isis is in trouble, though. She has to use circle of protection, but there comes the dragon from kick out on that. Ao Kwong to turn that fight around completely and bring down Grishank for the second kill. Deku was looking for number two, but a timely second from Bulger stopped that potential second one from coming on in. That was a nice play coming in from those guys. The ganks early on. Alquan needs as much gold early as possible. And uh, this is a story for most jungle assassins these days. But him more so. He doesn't have any little incidental health to work on. Left side, more aggression coming out as the taunt comes out of Met Yankee. Albert Chacho's out of mana. Likely going to be forced back to base here. 
Yeah, he'll probably just swing back there now. He's got opportunity to do so. He's not going to really miss anything too much to write home about. But he has to pick up the back hop. He's on the way back as well. So even though he misses the wave, he's not going to be forced too far. He needed a trip back anyway to finish off those travel issues, which we've just seen finish from. Another time to pick. Extra movement speed, some extra gold when he hits people. And of course, he doesn't mind a little bit of extra health regen when you're out of combat. Mid lane, still a group. The junglers have been hanging around here for quite a while right now. They're looking for these picks. The mid laners especially. Either one of them. Isis is always very vulnerable to ganks, but she doesn't really have any escape ability. So if they can catch her with the sentinel down for any reason, they can look to dive on her immediately. Spirit ball catchers will likely be dead. Yeah, I do I do like the fact that he picked up this Scylla, though, um, up against the Alkwanga as well, because Sentinel just gets you out of trouble if need be, um, as well as bees to just deny the ultimate if required to do so as well. So, Yomi, having a good start to this game so far. They're a little bit behind on gold, however, at the beginning of this. It's only 300, but 300 is 300. That's generally down to the first blood yep. that we saw get picked up by Alchapu over in that solo lane. So, for the time being, it's kind of all square for now. Yeah, mid harpies will be up in just about a minute. That could be next point of contention. As a little bit of a rotation, actually, it's going to be Elbert Chajo heading back to the left lane. Ho Yi, busy picking up his attack speed buff on the left hand side of the jungle, so no real pick potential right now or attack potential. Taunt mid lane could have found something, but Sentinel from Bulger gets him out to safety. Yeah, a bit of patience from Met Yankee actually didn't even use that taunt there, just held it, tried to force a Sentinel, which did work for them. Going to see a rotation from Yomi now heading over for that red buff with the three men, as you can also see High Five doing the same on their left hand side as well, just sharing experience as much as possible. Yeah, we haven't talked about the soul lane very much at all this game, but El Chapu just completely and utterly freezing this lane against Gilly, looking for those pulls. That's uh, Summon Suku hits. Not Summon Suku, what's it? Uh, Moonlight Charge hits and finds a knock, especially if Gilly happens to just turn around at the wrong point in time, or even just turns it up to the side. Could look for a pull. There's that feather step up ahead for you, and able to drop down. He's dead. Yep. He's just going to drop down and die immediately. The ultimate wasn't even used by El Chapu there. The feather step was enough and turned it around. Fused the bees just to deny the fear, no evil. Hoppies either side go one for one, though. Yomi take right, high five take left. But El Chapu is the one to watch out for right now. It's high five. They're going to be looking for him to continue doing what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, if he, if he keeps this up, he's zoning Gilly off of those last hits. If nothing else, he's knocking that little bit of extra gold. It adds up a lot over the course of the game. I think he's able to stay in range. I'm not. I wasn't looking close enough to see if he was actually getting experience of gold in general. He was trying to. If he was yeah, getting all of them, I wasn't sure. He should be getting golden experience from it because it's a bit harder to deny now that the change was reverted. But we did see um, Defender of Olympus used by Met Yankee to the left hand lane as a gang did come down from Grishank on this circuit. They don't manage to find Nevin there, but. They have an idea that they're still hanging around here, I believe, by the positioning right now. They're just waiting patiently, and you can see, yep, Geb stood on that ward, so they know something's up on this left-hand side, and even we see Bulger thinking about rotating for this. Or do we? Hello? Is it me you're looking for? I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your smile. You're all I ever wanted. And my eyes are open. Why? Dad, did you die? A apparently, I may have. You, you seem to be back. I, I have returned. I was very confused right what you were side. talking about. There's a gang of Japu's under trouble over here as well as Kai Kai is going to take to the sky and actually execute him after the Fear No Evil. That's exactly what Yomi needed to do to bring down El Chapu. Force the rotation, bring out Kwang over, but that means I'm relinquishing mid lane. is going to get focused instead and he'll go down to Grishank. Maybe because he had Kwang pick up a kill to Grishank here. If he can find it, he will find the second kill. Geb, Athena on the way. Bolch needs to watch himself here. Going to get hit by the taunt. There's no follow up though after the rest of it. Yeah, a little back and forth. They weren't able to find anything on the tail end of it. That right lane has just been back and forth all over the place. <laughs> and they're looking to transition over. You know, soul laners these days, they're no strangers to making early rotations. There's no teleports coming out, so it's not going to be joining team fights like that. When these fights start to break out, expect to see those guys rotating as the fight. You know, if we're ready to start doing Gold Fury, they're going to start rotating immediately before the Gold Fury actually starts up because they want to be part of these fights. Especially El Chapu is starting to get ahead in that lane in a big way. Yeah, El Chapu was getting ahead. I mean, now it's equaled out a little bit. Gilly yeah. did manage to get himself that assist there, so it's going to help him out a little bit, a little bit behind and go to 300. But El Chapu got aggressive onto Gilly again. Beads was forced to chase down with the feather step. The leap's already been used, but reinforcements are here in form of Al Kwong. And Ice is going to force El Chapu away with Suku. It's very hard to chase down and force the kill. 
Uh, it may not be able to find that kill necessarily, but uh, you know, delaying the back of Kateki is always an option. High five, gonna use this opportunity to actually start the gold for you on the left hand side of the map. Find Nevin as well, doing a lot of damage. Just Groshank trying to find this kill. Dive bomb gets him out and gets him a little distance, but the fight still continues. Sunbreaker drops the portion off. Go away from Grisha, but Matt Yankee's trying to steal away this golf here on the backside. Yo, we will get the golf here in the fight that unfolds. Forces circle protection to bring down one El who does reinforce to bring down Met Yankee. But it's a one for one trade, and Yomi get the golf here in Met Yankee, making the play happen. Yep, they took the gold lead on that one. Kill sitting four for four because of that exchange. High five and having a little bit of a rough time so far these games. That was an unfortunate one. There's a lot of damage coming down to the middle of the fight. They had the Wrath of the Gods, but Gev was just not in a position to use it. He was locked down and forced off of it. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, while I saw from Yomi that Mayanki did a really good job of just hesitating, being patient, and not wait patiently and long, as long as possible just to get in there and actually execute mm -hmm. what he needed to. Gets the hog down, secures it for his team. Good work from Yomi there. And gives him the gold lead because of it. Still an evenish game, though, but... Just a small golden experience advantage now. Well, that's pretty much most of the objectives off the map for the time being. I expect we'll be in a little bit of a lull going forward. Looking at the items, though. Bulcher looking for that big early game damage. So that I'm a monster hit. He Bulcher got MVP, basically, on the back of two games of Scylla back. I think it was week week one or two. Not, you know, typically you expect, oh, you need someone to set up the Scylla. I'm a monster because it's very hard to hit. It's easy to predict. It's easy to step out of. Bulcher is very, very good at landing it, even when the person's just moving around on their own. So with that, the Doom Orb, just one stack shot, I'll call that fully stacked, just like so I can ignore it going forward. He is hurting already if he can land those abilities, which he's Bulger, I don't expect him not to. Left side, Nonsense in a bit of trouble here. Shield comes out from Elbow Chacho. Meanwhile, right inside the Defender of Olympus dive did work out well for them. Nonton is going to get out of dodge just in time, as now the rotation from Bulger, he's going to have to disengage there. But what's happening in mid lane? Isis getting free tower pressure. Full wave here as well. Albert Chacho not really going to take those down too quickly. Going to force uh, Unrelinquished off this one, but he's looking for damage. Possibly a kill here as well. Not going to be able to save the lives of those minions. Tier 1 tower mid lane. Barely, barely going to survive. It's a hair's breadth away. Anyone looks at it funny, it will fall. Oh, high five did lose the man on the right hand side and left side they managed to keep Nantan alive mid lane turn on to the pro Chacho again into the split ball silence and round the back comes out Kwong he's going to be able to execute that Geb Rock Grishak is here though looking for him relinquished the dive down on the backside from Al Kwong though yeah he will fall he picks that kill up looking to answer back damage the tier 1 tower still survived not so much some of the members on both these teams not much follow-up to be had. Mana bars inside of Yomi are getting quite low, but Gilly has arrived for reinforcements, making sure that High Five don't look for the gauge. They can look for the kill, but Gilly not able to land that sacred monkey. Well, they can still look to pressure if they so choose to. I think they're going to choose the side of caution over our Yomi right now. 65. The gold lead's starting to get bigger. The experience lead's starting to grow once again. And that tower in the middle lane on its last legs too. So as the build and the game's going on, Yomi's starting to take control of this. Yeah. High five, though, they're no strangers to playing these games. I mean, they had a rocky one that we saw you said in round two. They had a rocky game as well. El Chapu now on the receiving end of a Gilly in the right side. Defend Olympus coming on down over. Somersault, rather, looking to lock down this kill. One taunt later is going to be a very, very dead El Chapu. There's a taunt. Oh, There's the damage. And to confirm that kill. Feather step was nice. Not going to find a Grishank, though. Might be able to get some revenge on this side. Doesn't have all available Bulcher on the way, however. They're going to get the Tormet Yankee, but it's going to force him to taunt himself into Gilly. Gilly going to trade with Grishank. There's the ultimate coming out as well. Beads forced at the same time. The Sikkim did not actually force because of the Beads. And now Grishank's the one in trouble. He's going to fall down to Al Kwong, and Bulcher's going to back away. And the fight did not work out well for Yomi then in the end. Actually, sorry, it didn't work out well for High Five in the end, I should say. Yeah, they're trying to find a kill on Unrelinquished. We'll find the Am Monster, but the heal coming Good off heal. the Sword Protection will get our health back up to a decent level on the back Apollo of the coming. Oh, yeah. no, he's not. Not so far about coming in for that. He's changed his mind. Going to go for the, back, the Harpies in the mid instead. And just back away. So Yomi picked themselves up another two kills. Don't lose any lives once again. Yeah. And this is working out well for them so far. Hey, Kateki's doing a good job on damage so far. A lot of that number coming out from LGP was just that back and forth poke onto, onto uh, Gilly earlier on. But Gilly has since caught back up. Is actually head on the gold number. So, and he's playing this really well. You typically will not see a Runeforged hammer on a Hunbats. But he's kind of that solo. They, they're expected to sort of be part of the front line. He can't build straight up straight damage because he will lose every single one to be won with that Wheelix. Well, he, what he can also do is he can just be that front line that he, his team needs to be. He's basically yep. there for the fear, no evils more than anything else. The damage potential in the rest of his squad, very, very strong. So he doesn't have to be that full damage in Hombats that you're used to seeing. 
right inside though and relinquish with this rotation picks up El Chapu again. El Chapu started off really well, but he's been focused since his early lead over Gilly. Yep. Left hand side harpies were picked up. Meanwhile, Met Yankee looking for someone running into two, realizing, yeah, maybe I don't want to be here. That ward, the poor little snowman didn't stand a chance. It will be brought down. Let's place on a sentry. Gold Fury, swimming her way down into the pit once again. We'll see Yomi head to that side of the map. They could definitely look to force it because they know that Albert Chacho's on the right-hand side of the map. Yep, Gold Fury is available. Sentry was down, as you said. Will we see Grishank and the boys go for this? It doesn't look like it for the time being. Never met Yankee and Al Kwong, played by Kai Kai. He's going to just swing in there, get control, and Nevin got a little bit aggressive on this left-hand side. He knew he had reinforcements, and Yankee trying to catch somebody on a rotation here. They see the purple buffs up. The Bulge is going to throw some damage out himself. Who is Al Kwong? Who's playing him? Is it Kai Kai? Kiteki. Wait, I think oh, I it's Kiteki. No, it's Kai Kai. It says Kai, or Kaiki, or Kiteki. Yeah, he's one of the three. I think it's Kiteki. I read Kai Kai. I heard, heard Kit Kat before. I've heard many, many ways. So I, I, I read it as Kai Kai. So, Kai -kai. I can't be wrong. Kai Kai, they're saying Kai Kai. No, I, I wasn't hearing the tag. Gotcha. My accent. I don't pronounce yeah. T's. Gresham coming out once again from Grishank onto Nevin. Going to get the full combo off onto Nevin, who's in trouble, but he's going to use the lead to turn the damage back on Grishank's face. The scorpion goes down. Another rock. He's in trouble too. But on the backside, the monster is out. Yep, there's El Shapiro looking to clean up kills in the backside of the fight as well. The fight is getting scattered. It's still two kills to one. Unrelinquished was tries in the lockdown. Bulger, one more wing gust through the wall. Not going to connect as Apollo takes to the skies. Looking to disengage from this one. He'll fly off to the back line Lobsack and look for something. He didn't find but... Gilly. He didn't find Gilly. Now he's going to have to just disengage. He's got a full minion wave to clean up. He can't stop this goal fury being done by um, Yomi here. So Yomi's going to get themselves another goal fury. And this all started with the aggression coming out from Grishank trying to pick up Nevin. And Nevin survived. Yep, that's going to be a second gold fury for this match. Going the way of Yomi, the gold lead is starting to grow little by little. Last game we saw, a, uh, we saw High Five going up against KOS Gaming. It was a back and forth game. So far, High Five have really not had an answer, and the gold graph is just going slowly, slowly, and further in favor of Yomi. Slowly, slowly indeed. Harpies due to spawn right on ones might get contested here. I'm going to actually going to back away and just give those ones up. Go back to farming mid lane left ones due to spawn as well. Actually, no, he's going to swing back and we'll see exactly what goes on here because it's going to be a 2v3 scenario here. Yeah, right side will go the way of Yomi once again. Left hand side, they're standing there and waiting to see if they rotate on over. This will be a 2v3 if High Five look to steal this one away, but they'll have the hand of the gods secured on the back of a storm call. There's really no time for High Five to get in there for that. I mean, this is going to be rough. High Five need to start looking to shut these guys down. They've been putting pressure onto El Chapu over in that solo lane. They've been tr putting pressure. Al Kwong has been more or less everywhere so far, constantly in the middle of these fights. It's been a rough game so far for High Five. Yeah, I think High Five needs to stop trying to fight and just start focusing on trying to farm up. Double time mid lane, though. Spirit Ball does connect onto Bolcher, but the shield was great from El Chacho with that blink to save the day there. Doesn't actually force a cataclysm on himself, but they do lose the tier one towers. The right hand tower goes down as well, and Gilly versus El Chapu is off again. Summon Suku will leap him by some distance. A teleport straight on the back of it with the Fear No Evil. Gilly will once again find Mid that kill. lane, there's a taunt. The circle of protection's down. Monster has been used by Bulger. Trying to get away, but the Wingus allows the mobility to chase him down. Even though Monster gives Wingus too. And look at the left hand side. We might see another fight. Fender Lump is used across the skies. Immediately used in response to make sure Nantan wasn't going to fall to that one. He's going to go possibly look to reinforce mid lane as Groshank oh. will fall before he gets there. Yep, he will, and now Nantan's going to back away as well. He's going to give Nevin time in this left-hand lane alongside Met Yankee to try and bring down this tier 1 tower. Right side, Gilly is now pressuring the tier 2. There's nobody able to come and defend this right now. Only El Brochacho in a position to do anything. Tier 1 does fall on left. The right one is going to fall, I think, before Brochacho can even get here. Even if he does, he's not going to be able to stop the amount of damage that Gilly can put out. Gold just swung in a big way. That just pushed things up to just about the 10,000 gold mark in favor of Yomi. High five need to put the brakes on this Yomi Freight Train right now before they get completely out of hand. Left Lots side, in trouble. Sunbreaker. Good Drop. leap in with a dive bomb from Nevin as well. The poke backwards of Nevin still taking the tower. Backside though comes a wing gust from Unrelinquished and they do find the kill on to Nantam. They're doing a good job right now keeping high five on tilt. I don't think there's been a full high five lineup alive for about the past two and a half minutes or so right now because every time someone gets picked up right before they back up, someone else gets picked up someplace else on the map. Yomi keep this up right now. High five, we're going to have a real rough time getting into this. And if any of this happens again going forward, Yomi, instead of picking up a tower or two, maybe picking up a gold fury, it's going to be that fire giant in their sights. 
Two times we've seen Yomi today so far. This his play on ISIS has been fantastic to yep. watch. Leading this team from the forefront throughout the whole game, both times as well. Player damage top of the shot once again. Although Bolcher, full credit to him, right on his tail at level 16 Scylla. That's not a badass considering the state of the game right now. Keeping right on his heels with player damage. Yeah. Unrelinquished, I believe as well, Isis was one of his most played gods going through the first five weeks, so it's not a case of, you know, he pulled it out of, out of someplace strange. It's a new pickup. It's it, it's kind of his, you know, maybe a comfort pick, but he plays it very, very well. Is it ban-worthy, potentially? If, it, if this it is how he be. plays every game, I agree. definitely. It could be, could be ban-worthy. We see Pro League teams ban away Isis constantly, don't want to have to deal with it. Checking with the Hunters, though, we can see the build differentials between the two. I was about to talk about that, but the Fire Giant has been started here by Yomi. Side, and it looks like this is going to go down gonna very push. quickly. It's going to be pop. There's Surf Protection Threshold. Yomi get the Fire Giant. High five. Knew it was happening, but just could not get there in time. May Yankee finds a turn on Elber Chacho. They're going to look to dump damage on him. He got a stone shield himself. Good cataclysm. But there's no follow-up after the cataclysm. Everyone else was trying to get out. Natasha across the skies to the right hand side. Chose the caution instead of going aggressive. Bolsha already used I'm a monster. And now with the tier 2 tower down already been on the right hand side, they can focus this mid one instead. And we're just pushing minions, really. They don't even have to back door if they don't want to. They have all their ultimates with the exception of the circle protection as well. Yomi are set and ready to go for them. There's a crush. Sickum combo. Found a decent bit of damage. The fire giant regen is going to get those health bars up very, very quickly. They have the sovereignty health regen aura in effect as well. They're looking to fight. They're ready to fight. They're man down. Good oh, taunt. Good spear ball. Good spear ball indeed. There's the suns falling down as well on the backside from Nevin. Only because she gets one. Good shot. No. Does turn this around. And Bolcher gets a kill onto Gilly. Nevin's in a bit too deep. Has to dive for the way. But that spirit ball destroyed Bolcher before he could get anything else off. Nonta wants to go for the trade. The trade was not good. And Kai Kai, Kit K, Kitty K, who whatever he's called, to make it tomorrow. Ooh. He'll bring down another kill. I'm the Phoenix too. Woo, we can just go with that. So that's what he to say. Elbert Chajar has respawned. And did he ever actually respawn? That's good. Surrender vote coming out. Like you said, yeah, respawns currently 10 plus seconds out. Fire minions. Fire minions. Minions present. That's going to be game. Yomi takes one off of high five going to this week. I believe with that, no team in group A is going to be closing out week one undefeated. Huh? Yomi, Yomi went undefeated. Probably no post game stats. The scraper lied oh. to me. So we'll get those away, guys. Outside. Apologies for that. And this was a good game, though. I mean, KOS, KOS Gaming. KOS Gaming give High Five a hard time. You said round two, they had a little bit of a rough time as well. So maybe some little things to watch the replays kind of look to improve on going forward. But well, this just the results. So the results from the other side, from the rest of the bracket, KOS did actually win their game up against Lunatic Esports. And with Yomi coming out on top, that's a real shock, though, Zaddy, because like, I don't think High Five didn't look like they performed as well as they have been doing. From what we've seen previous weeks. Some rocky stuff that were scattered around a little bit in team fights. Definitely some stuff to learn and figure out what was going wrong in these team fights. I mean, there's the, the KOS gaming matchup. Um, Kalachakra, the entire game, as the hunter was in their back line. He was diving down with the cross skies, and they were not focusing him down. It wasn't until the mm -hmm. last fight of the game they finally did, and they just won the, the fight was just over immediately. It's like, oh, he's here, kill him. Oh, he's dead. Hey, we won the team fight. Perfect work from Yomi there. Unfortunately for High Five, but they will still be second seed for that. We'll be back after this very short break, guys, with all the action coming out of Group B now as we take a little look at Resist Gaming, Torch, Noble Esports, and Cog Crusaders. They're all up for action to try and work out what's happening in their group.